Man, now I'm kind of seeing why YouTubers just, like, you know, repeat the same intro again and again to break the ice a little bit, I guess you could say. Because one of these days I'm just gonna run out of things and go, okay, we're, we're just gonna do it. it, here we go. Anyway, another stream- well, technically two streams today. So he streamed about 1am, I think it was my time? Um, and then he was gonna do one at 8 a.m., but according to the channel they announced streams in on their Discord, they... he... <laughs> something happened, a false alarm, I guess no stream, so that looked out my end because uh, I was asleep during that and would have missed uh, stuff, I guess? I mean, this one's got stuff to it or else I wouldn't have posted it. I didn't particularly... I mean... Mm, <laughs> I thought assumed it was going to be the same stuff again, and so I wasn't looking forward to going through this one because I'm like, oh great, now I get to look at the same stuff again in HD. Uh, but it actually did have some different stuff in it. He showed Serato twice, which gave me a tiny boost of joy in this dark abyss. The compies are working, it looks like at least to an extent the compies are working. The um, egg thing that he was trying to get to show up the last time seems to be showing up now. Uh, it looks like a little break animation too, which is kind of cute. That was incredibly fast, which we kind of figured because, I mean, it's just split and done. Um, aside from that... Boy, what else was there? Oh, yeah, the rest... There's a lot of verbal stuff in this one. So that'll be uh, something. Some of them I raised an eyebrow at, a, a significant eyebrow out, one of them in particular I probably won't comment on very much. However, I included it for your eyes only, ish, anyone's eyes really. Um, Dryo Dodge, which was mentioned in the dev blog, he showed it off here a little bit, so that was nice. So let's finally get going and finish this up yeah so scabs will like steal food um they will eat your eggs they will attack juvies and hatchlings around nests just be a pain in the ass they're relatively easy to fight though depending on how fresh of a hatchling you are <laughs> they run away if they get hurt enough this one is in uh, more or less obvious reasons. He's describing what the purpose of the scavengers are, at least in this the aisle terms, I should say. So they're going to be poking and prodding at nests and all that sort of fun stuff. Oh, and the juvies and hatchlings and stuff within the nest. I imagine they would go after regular juvies. Granted, he said the juvies can fight them off if you're big enough, so... I wonder if they'll be a little bit like the, um, what were they, the Velociraptors back in Legacy, where they'd just pop out of nowhere and poke at you. Uh, I remember my first encounter with those. I, I didn't read the patch notes. I don't even realize if I knew there was a patch that day, because, you know, Steam auto-updates in the background. And so I ran the aisle one day, and this thing ran up and started poking at me, and I was, I was really confused, because I thought I was another raptor, but it didn't look right, and I was just like, what on earth is going on? And so I just destroyed it and stared at it, and I'm like, is that a player? I've never seen this dinosaur before. What is this? Um, and later on, of course, I found out about the other thing, and then the little Avaceratops scared me at first because I didn't understand that that was a new AI, and so there was this strange new sound I'd hear, and I'd be like, what's that? Do I have to hide? What dinosaur is that? Because I hadn't heard it before, and I mean, yeah, of course now I know it sounds like, you know, herbivore-ish, but back then when I was still... Yeah, I hadn't played a whole lot, and of course the only other AI I had seen was the tacos and Oreos. I was like, what on earth is this sound? I'm gonna try and run away from that, I don't understand it, sort of thing. Of course, later on I found out it was new AI, and then I got very excited, but... Ah, anyway, it makes me think of that. Uh, so we'll see what the scavengers do when it comes to juvies, but... At least for in terms of nest stuff, it sounds like they're gonna be poking and prodding at you quite a bit. Yeah, well, they're going to be hard to catch. I mean, that's the idea. Giving them quite a big, um, like, perception radius. I think it's like... What is it? Uh, 
3,500 units. 250 meters. Com yeah, compies don't even bother if you're hanging around the nest. Perception radius and compie behavior. Uh, included because people are going to be curious about how far away you have to be for them to, you know, be able to sense you and stuff. Because it sounds like they're, like he said, supposed to be decently difficult to capture. Granted, he does it repeatedly, they're not really moving too much right now, so that's probably why. Um, and then the pterodactylus later on, I don't know if they share the same radius or not, but those little guys fly, which is going to make them pretty difficult. So we'll see how those guys end up being. Anyhow, it sounds like at least the compies, I don't know about the other guys, um, won't be too bothersome if you're very close. I would assume within the perception radius, because they're skittish little lads and they don't want to be caught. However, I could be very, very wrong. I do not know. Anyways, it sounds like there's gonna need to be probably maybe at least one guy hanging out at the nest, so... I guess that'll be a huge one-up for people in small groups rather than just a singular pair, because as just a pair, that's gonna be really annoying, having to have someone just hang around and sit there while the other one goes out and tries to hunt some RNG thing of some sort. Huh, <sighs> what a nightmare. So that's gonna be a something, I guess. Anyhow. Uh, included because, again, it might be interesting to some people regarding the stats and stuff of the radius that they can see in, which I imagine, again, is going to be important for deciding how far you can stray from the nest. Uh, they won't eat them that fast, that's just because I'm testing it. Quick, easy, this one was regarding, people were commenting how quickly the uh, compies were eating the eggs, like, they'd come up and the egg would be just immediately destroyed. Uh, so Amarok wanted to clarify this is only happening because he's testing it. So in the game it won't be this fast, rest assured. However, for the sake of testing it's just overall easier. So how much more on that one included obvious reasons, uh, clarification on the egg deletion unit that is compy right now. No, I'm being attacked. <clears throat> uh, what do you mean prey? Are uh, you talking about like... Are the dinos or? I think QA has the Kano, but it's all likely to change anyway. Oh, okay. Yeah, it's all getting like you'll see it in the dev blog. I kind of went into it a little bit about like what's changing with <clears throat> the AI. It's been <clears throat> AI has like been through a few changes recently. Well, over the last year or so into how it's going to be done. I found a lot of issues with like the base engine behavior trees and stuff and how reliable they are and how well they work. Like long server uptimes and lots of players and stuff and they just don't really work that well so I'm kind of just doing it all in C++ now and it seems to be a lot more reliable and so far anyway. Like, the behavior trees are good for, like, really simple stuff. But when it comes to, like, super complex kind of crap, it doesn't really work that well, to be honest. And when it comes to, like... But yeah, I won't, I won't talk about it yet, but it's just... It's better this way. This one I found interesting. Now, granted, I haven't worked with blueprints before. I was under the impression from when I was doing my stuff, which, again, uh, when it comes to game design, coding, and all that, I've only dipped my toes in. So I don't have a whole ton of knowledge and experience behind it. However, what little I understood, I was under the impression blueprints were for simple things, like little itty bitty things. So I thought you wouldn't want to make AI out of those, like, at all. Because, like he said, they have a tendency to do weird stuff. Like, I almost wanted to... When I was talking to my friends, I was like, isn't this kind of like trying to do the Mona Lisa with a paint-by-numbers sort of outline? Like, it works, and it's there, you'll get it. 
but it's gonna look like a hot mess compared to doing it all by hand. Uh, that's what my impression was anyway, so I'm not entirely surprised that it didn't work well. I'm more surprised it took this long for them to figure out why it wasn't working well and to fix it, but... What do I know? I, uh, this isn't my realm, so I, we're gonna move on from that one. Mate with me. Please. Be my buddy. And I crash because I need to rebase master because we changed the name from Utah Raptor to Omni Raptor. Ah, and everything's broken. This one's a similar line to the other one. Um, Nick, when putting this into words without coming across as an arrogant piece of garbage because I don't know what I'm saying. Like, I'm very little experience, but from what I have looking looking through game files uh, in a not at all strange way and from when I was doing my own projects back in the day which again nothing fancy so don't think into that it's not a whole lot it was itty bitty baby stuff um, nicknames and code and stuff are common so I was a little bit confused when he said renaming Utah Raptor messed everything up because in theory, I was under the impression that you could have had it Omniraptor in the menus and stuff just fine. But within the code itself, it would have been alright. Like, for instance, in Left 4 Dead, the survivors are given nicknames in the code and in the files. So if you look at, say, the voice files for Zoe, they're under Teen Girl. And in the console and stuff, from what I understand, it'll also say things like Teen Girl. It won't say her name, I imagine that went through a bajillion changes, so they only- So they had a trope for each survivor that they wanted to fill. And so they couldn't exactly go through the entire game, you know, making process under a certain name when they probably didn't even know what that name was going to be until super duper later. So they had Biker for Francis, and I think it was Office Work- No, Man- Was it Manager? Doesn't matter. Uh, something for Lewis. Uh, veteran for Bill, was it veteran? At eh, whatever, teen girl, for, teen girl for Zoe, and it's the same in Left 4 Dead 2. There's gambler, produ producer, mechanic, and coach. Easy done, just these little caricatures they wanted, but no names attached to them because the names were going to change as development went on. So I was under the impression that this sort of thing shouldn't happen, but. Uh, again, my experience is very limited, so I just blinked rapidly when I heard it <laughs> moved on. Uh, so yeah, I found that interesting, included it, so you guys could have a listen to that. Oh, you guys haven't seen the, the dryer dodge like this. Only partial audio on this one because he's playing music and it's choppy, plus the rest of what he was saying wasn't very important. But I'm not sure if the Dryo makes those sounds in-game because as if I've ever played Dryo ever at all. Well, no, I think in... maybe in Legacy? No, not even then. Anyway, I don't know. However, they were cute little sounds. Aside from that, it was the dodge. He was showing off the new dodge mentioned in the dev blog. I don't remember if this was before or after the dev blog was actually posted because he was streaming at the same time it was posted during his stream which is also part of why the other video took so long I, the way I do the screenshots it, yeah, anyway um, that aside getting to see it in action pretty neat included because Dryo desperately needed something good in its life and it finally got something hopefully good in its life and also a little tiny bit of Serato uh, the first one, alongside the Dryo, was technically the second one he showed, and it was a little bit longer. He did, like, the tiniest bit of movement. Um, after that, he was just standing on a log and pretended it was a misclick and went right back, but... Ah, <sighs> we can hope we see more of Serato soon. My heart will must go on, however, so we're gonna go to the next one, reluctantly. Oh. Yeah, the next one doesn't have audio to it. Okay, so there was the 
pterodactylus. I keep almost saying tupendactylus for no apparent reason. Yeah, the little pterodactylus guys. So this was before they were allowed to fly. They hadn't been in the blueprint version of the AI. He had set up the flight, but he was switching it over to the C++ uh, version, so they didn't have flight just yet, so they'd do these cute little hops to get around. Um, it'll show them flying a little bit later. I don't remember if there's audio to that one or not, but um, yeah, he'll good to see them fly a little bit. There was a bit more of them flying shown later on, however, he was so far away during that point, and even the other one, it's a little bit hard to see at times. Um, they're so tiny that even while I'm editing this, I'm like, oh, is those two pixels just a something like, you know, rendering in? Or is that actually one of the little dudes flying around that he's commenting on? It's really hard to tell. We'll see how um, visible they are here, but I was able to see them decently well, and especially when they were hopping. The flying ones, yeah, you could see them a bit. Um, and I do have some of the audio that should play at some point um, of the death sound for one, because I don't think we'd heard that until now. So I wanted to make sure I had that in here. And this is going to be the last, the last change to AI before it, that's it. I'm not doing any more. This is it. Last two years of R&D. <laughs> this is where we're at now. No going back. And this one was purely just for archival logging, whatever you want to call it, purposes. A dev comment is a dev comment, and this one seemed pretty important regarding, you know, development of AI and stuff. <sighs> AI has been just in limbo for the longest time now, and we can hope they're gonna finally make some progress on it. Because during streams eons ago, before my logging days, he would show, like, Utah Raptor AI that looked pretty good. The way it acted was pretty decent. It didn't insta-attack Utahs from the looks of it. It would be neutral for a while, they'd wander around, and then other times they'd be aggressive. They seemed to move in groups. Um, that sort of thing. However, we never got that version, we just got the heat-seeking missile version from what I'm aware, and then they just got yanked. And then, for whatever reason, Dryo got yanked as well, even though Dryo was fine, because Dryo is Dryo and it's not like it can do anything anyway. But, uh, whatever, I guess. Well, no, actually, I wanna say my friend who was playing a Hipsy got killed by a Dryo AI once, but I'm struggling to remember if... I think that's what happened. I think she pecked at it and it kicked her and she died. That or she was hanging around it and it got annoyed. I don't remember which one anymore, it's been a while. But anyway, yeah, so dev comment did, included purely because of that. And lastly, we have Flight of the Itty Bitty Pterodactylus Boys. Um, all two pixels of them. You can see them a little bit better in this clip, which is why I chose it, because he gets up close to them. But for the most part, he stayed so far away, as you saw, they were tiny. Even while I was editing this, they were incredibly small, and I was just like, oh boy, this is gonna be fun. I debated on even including it, but since he does get up close to them at some points, I was like, sure, why not? They're new guys, might as well include them. It, it can't hurt anyone. So, that marks the end of this one. We'll see if there's another two, three, or four of these, but for now, that should be that. Um, overall, this one was much more interesting than the prior one, at least for me. Um, well, he wasn't- like, he was still working on the scavenger stuff, which he said he's been working on for a while and he wants to get it done soon, which is why he was doing it now. Um, because it's Saturday for him already, he said he technically wasn't supposed to be doing anything, but he wanted to try and get this stuff done. Um, so I thought he said he wanted to get it done within the week or something, I don't remember. I didn't include it because comments like that just... yeah. Anyway thoughts, final thoughts on this stream. As I said, better than the other one. He had a bit more to say this time around. In fact, quite a bit had audio to go along with it, especially compared to the last one, which was, I think, mostly not audio, but it 
be that way with these sort of streams. Amarox, a lot of... usually his don't have any commentary to them, um, so it's purely visible... <laughs> visual on that part. However, this one, he seemed to be in a chatty mood, so he talked quite a bit today. In both of them, actually. The other one had quite a bit near the end, and then this one had a fair amount throughout. He was very, very talkative. He just... this was the important parts, I guess you could say. But yeah, he seemed to be decently chatty in this one. So, overall thoughts in closing. A pretty good stream. Better than the other one. Uh, I wouldn't say spectacular, even if it had glimpses of Serato. Glimpses of what can be someday in the far, 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 far future. Um, not a whole lot. It was more than the other one, which was basically just egg and egg smash. This one at least had, you know, a little bit more to look at. There's a little bit more going on. Not too much more, but a little bit more. And he did talk more often, which allowed me to include other stuff that I wouldn't have otherwise been able to include. Like sitting at the loading screen for a very long time. He was talking, so I can include it, but otherwise it's like, it's just dead footage. But anyway, That'll be the last one of these for now. We'll see if there's another five of them by the time I wake up. Who knows. Uh, it seems whenever they stream once, there's like 50 more and then they'll kind of go into hibernation again. So we'll see how many more decide to stream as well. But that'll be it for this one. I hope you all have enjoyed these. I'm sorry they're significantly lazier than even my other ones, which is saying something. However, for one, there's been a ton of them, and two, I'm still working on everything else, I'm in not video-wise, so I'm trying to get these done as quickly as I can and then move on to the next. Which I guess in some ways is good. I like to move the Serato around, the picture one I mean, but it does take a whole lot of time, and right now I just don't have that time. <sighs> Boy. Editing the audio takes a bit of time as well, depending on how much I mess it up. You would... well, no, you guys wouldn't be at all surprised by how much I have to edit out. There's a lot that I am just go off on a tangent and I'm like, well, this actually wasn't really relevant at all, so we gotta cut that. Or I trip over my words way too much and I can't even just keep the take in there. There's losing thoughts midway through the sentence. Mostly it's tripping over things and not being able to speak properly. Or voice crack all of a sudden and it's like, oh man, well that's ruined. But anyhow. Finally done. That's enough from me. Have a great day, night, whatever heck time you end up seeing this. Uh, by now it is the weekend, so enjoy. And goodbye! Thank you.